Hi, I'm Darlene Tate, and we are going to do another Film Friday, a fast roundup of what's happening in film in our region. First, a reminder that the Victoria Film Festival launches at noon on February 5th. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit, um, particularly about the local films playing, and we'll include some links. Today's guests include Robin Thomas, whose film is playing at the Victoria Film Festival. We also have Kathleen Gilbert, our regional film commissioner, and David Geis, the executive director of Cinevic, our independent film society. A quick film news roundup includes Movie Maker magazine ranking Victoria in its top places to live and work as a filmmaker. And Kathleen's going to talk a little bit about that and we'll include a link to the full article. For our indie filmmakers, I want to remind you that submissions for Cinevic's very successful Short Circuit Pacific Rim Film Festival closes on February 1st, and there is a link right here to more information and a link to the submissions which are done via filmfreeway.com. So get your films in. You've only got, uh, I guess, a couple of days left. Uh, some congrats go out to Sarah Nicole Foucher's her short Jack Be Quick received an honorable mention award at the One Reeler short film competition. Congrats, Nikki. Also to Matt Haley and his team who pulled in a best ensemble acting in a short for his film The Settler, which is getting some great traction in the festival circuit. And we're going to talk to Matt a little bit more next week. In the meantime, here's a link where you can watch his short Western film. So let's start by chatting with Robin Thomas, who's currently in Edinburgh, Scotland, working on her master's degree. And we're gonna have a bit of a chat with her before she heads off to bed. And now we have joining us, Robin Thomas. And Robin is over in uh, Edinburgh, Scotland right now, and you're gonna be there for a while. And what are you doing over in Edinburgh? So I decided to go back and do my master's in global mental health, oh. which uh, everyone says is a, a good time to be <laughs> studying mental health these days. Really? And, uh, yeah, so I'm at the University of Edinburgh and it's only a year long program. So I'm, I'm definitely hoping to blend my mental health advocacy with filmmaking. Wonderful. Well, um, which leads us really nicely into um, Follow My Brain. Mm -hmm. So tell us how that um, came about. Yeah, so that came about, we were applying to the TELUS Story Hive uh, web series grant program. So this was actually designed to be the pilot in a full web series, but then of course COVID happened in the middle of production for the film and funding for the series was stalled. Um, but we were able to, to complete this first episode, which was really great. So um, I reached out to Tamara Plush and Naomi Devine, two wonderful local filmmakers. And we collaborated on this piece and we really wanted to do something that was changing the narratives around psychosis because there's so much stigma and fear. And people often think with something like psychosis that you know it's it's really bleak and so we wanted to find a story that showed that there's a lot of hope for recovery wonderful so can you give us a brief synopsis about follow my brain like what what can people kind of expect to see going in yeah so the film follows cam webster and when he was 19 he started experiencing uh, hallucinations and delusions and was hospitalized and it's really the story of his recovery and how his family and friends and community were such an integral part of of his journey of healing and he's a really talented boxer so we really wanted to focus on that in the film because it really shows you what it was like for him being this young strong man and then suddenly to go through this really shattering diagnosis and how that really impacted his cognition and um, the medications that he was put on caused all of these different symptoms which made it really hard for him to continue training with his boxing and as we follow his recovery journey from mental illness we also are seeing him get back into training and uh, get back up again and pursuing what he loves wonderful and as I had mentioned uh, leading up to uh, talking with Robin, um, Follow My Brain is appearing at the Victoria Film Festival, which starts February 5th. I will put a link down below so that you can go and uh, get some tickets. 
Um, so we're all excited for you, Robin. And I'm also going to put a link down because you've just completed an interview with CFAX, I believe. Yes. Okay. So with CFAX, so I will, if I can get the link to that, I will also post it below. So for those of you that would like to hear a little bit more about Robin and this uh, particular film that is coming up to the film festival, you can follow that link. So hopefully we'll get that. And it's, uh, you must be ready to put your feet up and have a glass of wine or cup of tea or something. <laughs> yes, definitely. Actually, the plan is cheesecake, so. Cheesecake, good. <laughs> Wonderful, I'm there with you. Okay, Robin, well, I'm not gonna keep you. Thank you for this update. Good luck on your uh, masters. And um, we look forward to connecting down the road a bit. Uh, uh, maybe before you come home, we'll have a chance to talk again. I'd, I'd be interested after the festival uh, to talk and find out your feed, the feedback you've gotten and the response. So that might be fun. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks so much, Darlene, and happy Film Friday. Oh, great. Thanks, Robin. Talk to you soon. As I mentioned earlier, we have invited Kathleen Gilbert back, hopefully as a regular guest, so we can get a bit of a roundup on what's happening in film in the region. So welcome, Kathleen. Hi. Hi. I, hi, I know you've got a busy day, so I'm not going to keep you long, but uh, what can you tell us about what's going on in the region related to film? Right, so you know, we haven't got a lot of new news since last week, unfortunately, as I mentioned last week, we're still waiting for the okay from the show that we've landed and has confirmed uh, for February and March-ish, um, so hopefully maybe by next Friday, I'm sorry, but we're still under confidentiality agreements for that one. But I can say that we have also now landed, although I can't tell you the name, That's we've okay. landed another Netflix series that hopes to go to camera almost immediately after Made is finished. So that's really good news for all of the people that are working on um, Made and on other shows or want work uh, once Made is finished. So we're very excited about that. That's amazing. That's really the biggest news. I mean, we've been really busy this week. We've sent out a lot of packages. Um, you know, Brian uh, in my office, as you said, our locations coordinator, has also been busy um, collecting locations. So we've had quite a few people submit locations to our location database. And so he goes through those and fixes those all up and gets those all posted. So. Uh, it's been a busy week. I've been um, working with shows that are already here, handling <laughs> some fires and helping to put out a lot of fires this week, it appears. Um, well, that's interesting, so Kathleen. Um, so the, the Film Commission doesn't just work to bring productions here. You Do you stay the course then when a production is setting up in town and they're here for, let's just say, a month? you stay connected with them and assist them in navigating any issues they encounter? Absolutely. I mean, that's part of our job. We want to make sure that we manage film production here so that um, it's, you know, it's a good experience for everyone. So it's a good experience for the location, for the production and for the general public. So we, you know, handhold both sides uh, through, through the process. And certainly when productions run up against brick walls, we step in and try to help navigate that, help cut through red tape, try to make sure that both the whole story is being told on both sides. Uh, and that's true as well. Uh, when we have complaints from the general public about filming, we want to make sure that we hear both sides and then figure out how, you know, how can we keep everybody happy here? How can we make sure that this location remains film friendly? but also that the production company leaves our city with a really good experience. And when they talk to other producers, because they do, uh, yeah. that they have a really good story to tell about filming in Victoria. And, and with that, can I just say, before I forget, uh, and this is breaking news because it was just announced today, uh, or maybe last night. This is what that, I was just gonna ask you about. <laughs> uh, so uh, Movie Magazine has named Victoria as one of the top 10 cities for uh, both working and living for filmmakers. So it, we made number five. And you know, we're in, we're in um, the company of some amazing locations like you know, Santa Fe, New Orleans, Philadelphia, uh, Georgia, and Savannah. Well, Savannah is Georgia, sorry. Savannah, uh, all of those are like major film production centers. So we are so happy to be included in that top five. You know, we beat out 
people like uh, Richmond, Virginia, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Providence. So uh, we beat out some pretty big players as well. So uh, I'm just so proud. I think we're doing so well. And that really is, um, when I heard that, I checked into the uh, magazine, and that really is the go-to magazine for the production industry in Los Angeles. So that is a really huge coup. And I think the fact that we have attained that status really speaks to the work that you and the commission are doing. I mean, well, thank we, you. Didn't, we thank didn't get there by accident. We got there through a lot of hard work. So, so thank you for that. That was exciting. And I'm going to put a link to the full article um, down below so that people can go and read all about it. Cause that was an exciting piece of news. So well done. Yeah, hopefully not only will that attract uh, more shows here, but maybe some more producers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right, Kathleen, we won't keep you. I know you've got some um, other things on your plate today. And I'm also going to look for, I think you did a recent interview with, was it Czech or CTV? CTV. CTV. I will find the link to that. And if I can, I will post it down below as well so people can Perfect. watch that. So thank you again for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Hey, yes, you too. Bye-bye. Right, Kathleen, bye-bye. And next up is David Geis. And most of you in our local film community will be very familiar with David, who is the executive director of Cinevic, the Independent Film Society. So David, welcome and thank you for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. And uh, we were hoping that you could give us a bit of a rundown on what's happening in the indie world in our region. Uh, well, we're kicking off the year here uh, with uh, some Cinevic members screening at the Victoria Film Festival, which is kind of the biggest thing uh, going on in our world right now. I guess the Victoria Film Festival has, you know, all kinds of films, but they, they even got some local indie selections, which is great. Um, the production side is a bit of a, a lull at the moment in the winter, but um, for screenings, uh, we've got members, Tara Lee Novak, director of the film Sombrio Surf, uh, Robin Thomas, director of Follow My Brain with Cam Webster, Connor Gaston, a longtime cinematic member, director of his newest film, Orworm, I think I'm saying that correctly, or Earwig. Yeah. Um, and our own uh, Short Circuit Film Festival alumni, Steve Sweetbelt, with his short film, Finding the Balance. Uh, so there's sort of like uh, cinematic members and a film festival alumni screening at Victoria Film Festival. Um, not in the shorts program, but I should also mention a, his first feature film, Arnold Lim, uh, director of All in Madonna, also produced by Anna Delera and writer Susie Winters, all of them cinematic members. We're proud to have them screening. So uh, yes. great lineup. Go to victoriafilmfestival.com. You probably said that a few times yep. this week. I, I have, and uh, I'm going to have the link uh, put in down below so people can go head off and buy some tickets and support our local film. Awesome. Yes, go check out the films. There's quite a few yeah. local, local folks this year. Uh, anything coming up that you're able to mention or tell us about? Uh, yeah, so we do, like I mentioned, there's a bit of a lull, I think, in production right now. It's just kind of winter and people are still trying to see how this pandemic plays out. Um, but on the production side of things right now, uh, it's starting to pick up, I guess, going into February with a couple of our members. Um, Octavian Call will be shooting his short film, Wormies, yeah. making, my, making my skin crawl just thinking about <laughs> it. Uh, and Sarah Nicole Fosher will be filming her short film, The Test. Mm -hmm. um, and then heading into March, uh, the 2020 CineSpark winner from last year, Anne-Marie Hack heads into production uh, with her film, Wishing Fall. That's coming up in March. Great. Um, and just to give a quick shout out to our members, I guess, who were brave enough, uh, you know, just looking backwards a little bit, brave enough and safe enough to forge ahead with productions over the past few months. Um, Joyce Klein wrapped her film Cancelled Stamp a couple of months ago. Yep. And Lukas Hanalak is finishing up uh, his first short film since moving to Canada last year called uh, Empty Spaces. So yeah, kudos to a few of our members who've, who have shot their films during the pandemic and over the winter. And I know, I know a little bit about those two films and um, all I can say is those are going to be really ones to look out for. They're uh, such fascinating storylines, uh, great production value. So I think we're all really looking forward to uh, both Lucas's and Joyce's films and, yes. and uh, Octavian's. Yes, exactly. So there's, there's the production side of things. I guess watch for those coming up in the next, in the next year or so. Yep. Um, for Cinevic, we've got uh, our own kind of workshops events coming up. Um, uh, related to the Victoria Film Festival, we're hosting one of the BYO BYOP, otherwise known as Bring Your Own Popcorn, film discussions for VFF. Uh, ours is Wednesday, February 10th at 6 p.m. with all those local filmmakers and Cinevic members I just mentioned earlier. Uh, it's free to attend, but it is limited capacity. So if you want to RSVP to that, do that quickly. 
And now, um, um, David, is there uh, is that on social media, or can you give me a link that I can post for people uh, on here to click to? I can send you the link. Um, it, if you do follow, you know, VictoriaFilmFestival.com, you follow into the uh, uh, the sort of not the films but the events link. Um, okay. It's got it's got a whole bunch of those BYOP discussions that they're doing. Okay, sure, I can find it. filmmakers. So okay. we're yeah, we're thrilled to continue sort of our tradition now, which is hosting a reception for local filmmakers at VFF, even if it's sort of over the airwaves this year. We'll still have a bit of a social time. Great. And just for our own Cinevic events, I should mention, uh, Screenwriting Support Group is a monthly meetup that's free to attend. The next one's coming up Thursday, February 4th, next week. Um, and Yappy Hour, we actually just had one uh, for January already, but the next one coming up is February 24th. So check our website for those. And have you, have you uh, got a host for that one yet? I know that you generally, uh, that Cinevic generally does, and I, I'm just curious if one's been named yet for that one. Uh, we don't have one yet for the end of February, but we will we will uh, find one and post that uh, as soon as we yeah. confirm yeah. someone. Great, those are always fun to attend. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, that's about it for for Cinefic. Now we've got Perfect. we're going to have some workshops in the spring, but uh, nothing nothing quite ready to announce just yet. Okay, well we'll we'll have you back on again. Um, I think sure people thing. are just really interested in what's happening in film in general, and because the indie and and. Uh, uh, studio productions seem to be kind of two different worlds. It's it's uh, good, I think, to have everybody together and just say what's happening so that we have an overview of film in the region. So we'll have you back on and you can talk about uh, things like that that are coming up for Cinevic and more screenings and productions, hopefully. So awesome. yay. Yep. it's ramping up. Okay, David, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Okay, talk to you soon. Well, there you have it. And it was a bit longer than I had anticipated, but we do have the Victoria Film Festival launching on uh, the 5th. So with that coming into play, I wanted to make sure we gave enough attention to um, some of our local filmmakers who are screening at that festival. So perhaps once the festival is over, we can, we can take this down to um, hopefully just five minutes. But, um, in the interim, I wanted to make sure you didn't miss anything about what's going on in local film. Now, throughout this video, I also constantly mention there's a link down below and there will be a link down below. Well, there are no links down below because this program doesn't allow hyperlinking on it. So instead, all of the links that have been mentioned will be placed in the body of the post from wherever you read it and I will make sure those are all hyperlinked. So if you get to a point um, and want to follow a link, just go back up to the post and click that link and everything will be placed in the order in which it was mentioned um, in this Film Friday. So thank you all for taking the time to watch this long one. I hope you learned a little bit about what's going on in our industry or were enticed to go and support local film by buying a ticket for the Victoria Film Festival. So enjoy your coming week. Thanks for watching. Bye.